Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Ramon, how are you today? In today's video, I'm gonna be doing another Fancy Friday because it's Friday. But this week I'm gonna be doing something a little bit differently. First and foremost, we have Fenty skin. So we're gonna be working from the base, base, base up, doing a full Fenty face. Second of all, kind of going back to doing a little bit more makeup on the channel, I'm gonna be doing a makeup look inspired by a very specific magazine cover, which I'll get to in a second. But basically today's video is gonna be a little bit more of also a personal video, just kind of talking about things that I like, things that I'm interested in, and kind of relaying that back into skincare, makeup, yeah. So I'm gonna be doing a full face inspired by this magazine cover I'm gonna have here on the screen. It's Jihyo from the K-pop group TWICE. I'm gonna be replicating that look using Fenty Beauty products only, and also talking about my favorite favorite K-pop groups. So let's get into it. But before we get into it, hit the subscribe button, notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, fancy content on this channel, give this video a thumbs up. And down below, what are your thoughts on the things I said about specific K-pop girl groups? Who are some of your favorite? What are some of your favorite bops? Let me know. So here we are, face is cleansed. I used the Fenty Total Cleanser prior to this just because I had other stuff on my face that I wanted to get off. I've been sitting here for a minute, so we're experiencing some transverdimal water loss. So I'm going to continue my skin prep, I'm gonna be using the fat water next, and then going in with the hydrovisor. Today's video is gonna be all about my favorite K-pop girl groups. I got into K-pop about four or five years ago, I think now. For time reference, it was about the time that Blackpink was coming out with their second little EP. Twice was about to come out with Signal. G Friend had just come out with Navi Lera, so like late, I think 2016 at this point. So yeah, four years. Prior to that, my best friend Riley actually tried really hard to get me into K-pop. He had a poster on his wall above his bed of girls' generation circa their O era. And I was like, who the hell are these people? Who are these girls? And he like tried so hard to get me into them because he was really into like second gen K-pop, the Sistar, 2NE1, SNSD's like primary like heyday. I just couldn't get into it for some reason. And then one day I was scrolling through Tumblr, I'm one of those kids, and this video came up of this girl group performing their choreo, but it was like a double sped up choreo routine, killing it. And I was like, who is this? First of all, this is so cool. But also the song was a bop. And it turned out to be G Friend, and it was their double speed choreo for Navilera. So I looked them up and fell in love with that song. Still to this day, one of my all time favorite K pop songs. And through them, it was just kind of like falling down a rabbit hole. I discovered Twice and Blackpink and all these other groups, and here we are four years later, still heavy into it. So yeah, I'm just going to be going through talking about who my favorite girl groups are, biases, favorite singles. So my primary favorite K-pop groups are actually CLC and G Friend, as I mentioned. They're like the first group that got me into K-pop, so I'm heavily biased towards them, but they also like super talented group, churn out bops, great, great choreo. CLC, I don't know why. I just like their sound and their look and like their vibe. I just really like a lot. I have other favorites, obviously, but those two are like my top tier. My biases in CLC are definitely Soren and Elki, the two foreign girls. Side note, Soren actually has her own YouTube channel, Produce Soren, and she speaks English really well, so a lot of her content is actually just about like a day in the life of K-pop idol or like behind the scenes of getting ready for promotions or just like questions of being like a foreign idol in Korea. But looking at them, my favorite CLC single has to be Hobgoblin. That being said, I have a lot of favorites. Number one slash no one EP is one of my favorites. My boyfriend got me that one for Christmas because here in Chicago, we have a cute little K-pop store. But they also had other bops like Black Dress, they had No, and like, for me, they're kind of a group that focuses on a little bit more of a different subset of lyrical content when it comes to music. Instead of being the cutesy little like opa groups, they actually do a fair amount of like low key female empowerment, like especially No, talking about like, I'm not going to dress or conform to standards that you want me to look like, like red lips. No. I like their sound a little bit, although the last few releases have been a little bit more EDM focused, which is not my tea, but still good. But Hobgoblin, hands down, best song. I know all the words. And then looking at G Friend. Again, G Friend was the first group that got me into K pop. That was the first rabbit hole I got into. And whenever I discover an artist, I have to go back and look at their entire back catalog. And thankfully, G Friend was the first group I got into because G Friends had a decent catalog at that point. Again, they had just come out with Navilera when I first got into them. So many of their singles were so good at that point. They'd had Glass Speed, obviously. They had Rough, which was a great song. Me gustas tu. But even since then, they've dropped a lot more really great songs. My biases in G Friend, CMB, obviously, and Anji. Happy she's getting a lot more lines these days. But besides Navilera, my all-time favorite G Friend song is actually Time for the Moon Knight. 
their visuals on that, everything. Although since then, they've also dropped a couple other songs that are like actually really good. Like their last single, The Apple or whatever, they look so good. That song is so bomb. They were also one of the first comebacks I got to like be actively excited for because that was when they were coming out with Fingertip. That EP, one of my favorites too, especially Hear the Wind song is a really great song. And yeah, my friends make fun of me for liking them just because a lot of their songs are very like anime theme sounding, but I'm not ashamed. They're actually one group I really want to see in concert. And then one of my other all time favorite K-pop groups is going to come literally to no surprise because of course I'm a skincare gay on social media and that is Luna. I discovered Luna because I had a friend who was also into K-pop and we were at his place and he's like, oh my God, you have to listen to this group. And at the time, like he was playing me some stuff that I was just like, I wasn't into, I wasn't feeling. And then he played Eclipse, the Kim Lip solo single. My whole world got flipped upside down. That song just hit, like just hit the spot for me. That song did it for me. That was another rabbit hole. Um, that was also a really cool experience being into Luna. Early enough into them, dropping songs that I got to see some of the last few solo singles. So I was part of the last four, like Eve onward. And there was a hype when the group actually dropped their group single, Favorite, which Favorite, I think up to this point is still one of my all time favorite K-pop songs, period. Any artist, any group, Favorite just does it for me. I'm trying to get hyped to go out, Favorite. Having a bad day, Favorite. Feeling sexy and free? Favorite. Luna's one of those groups you really have to unpack because first of all, you have all the solo singles, then you have all the subgroups, and then you have the actual group single all together, but then you have all the Lunaverse stuff, and that's where it gets really interesting. I love a well thought out concept. I love a very low key conspiracy theory situation, and that's Luna gives that to me. The whole, if you're bored and have a few hours to just waste in a day. Look at the whole Luniverse situation because that they thought that through. But going through the solos, basically everything up until Chetty, not necessarily a big fan of. Jin Soul single, I hate with a burning passion, but the visuals, incredible. And then Kim Lip, obviously still like, she does that for me. She gives me like R&B tees, like everything I love, like very like old school throwback sounds. Mm. Real quick before we get into more <laughs> Luna talk. For the GQ magazine cover, you can basically see it's a very cute little like warm, not monochromatic, but it's a very, very overall warm scape sculpting situation. So it's very like orange and gold based. It's very subtle. It's mainly in her cheekbone to accentuate that and sculpt that. And then around her inner third of her eye to kind of give that little bit accent and pop. So I'm going to be using the kilowatts specifically <laughs> trophy wife. Duh. I'm going to be using the Mimosa Sunrise to do a lot of the orange. I'll be using the Diamond Bomb and Cognac Candy to kind of accent and do a little bit more of the deeper color since it has that rich coppery tone to it. And then in the inner corner, she has a nice icy pop. I'm gonna be using Sandcastle Minted Mojito Kilowatt Duo to do that one. And that's actually the first thing I'm gonna do. A trick I learned from one of the girls I worked at Sephora, Christina, especially for inner corner highlights, hit that first. So that way that is planted and you have a good base so that it doesn't get muddy by trying to add it in later. So anyways, back to Luna. Eve, again, that was another single where it dropped and I was like, oh, like this is game changer. Fun facts, go on single, one and only. If you wanna piss me off, just play that song. I hate that song. In terms of the, the subgroups though. I actually love Luna One Third subgroup. I don't know why. Don't ask me. It just, it gets me. It's cute. It's fun. Also, they filmed that in Hong Kong and I had just gotten back from Hong Kong when I first saw that. And I was like, <laughs> I know that place. But I don't do QT a lot, but that actually really hits it for me. I love that whole sound and look. Odd Eye Circle, one of the most slept on concepts in pop music ever, period. That whole EP is just so beautiful. It's so well done. It is bop after bop after bop. Also, when I first started dating my boyfriend, we played that a lot. So for me, like a lot of those songs just remind me of him. And then Why Why Buy Why, I actually did not like. I was not a fan. Mainly because you had all those girls, like you had Eve, you had Go On, you had Olivia Hay do really, really darker concepts in their sound. Like sonically, their solo singles were a little bit more dark. And then you had them do Love Forever, which was cute. I love the concept, the visual, as with all Luna stuff is so well thought out, so beautifully done. But it doesn't, it didn't connect to me. Um, also, Olivia has solo single. And then getting into the actual Luna group releases, again, favorite, it just like, it amps me up. Hi Hi, great song, great visual. Love the whole live stages for that. I wish Favorite had gotten its like time to shine for live stages because that choreo just did it for me. I was not a fan of Butterfly, I'm gonna be honest. Like, is it cute? Yeah, do I love it? No. So what? I feel like that was the girls being their most like into their uh, comeback and into their live stages. They looked fierce, they were living their best life. They were giving me entertainer 
summer vibes. And then like the last few, like I really like the album filler tracks. I don't get as much love, like stylish, colors, perfect love, love that one. And then in terms of Luna, I don't actually have like bias biases. Kim Lip and Eve are the ones I vibe with the most, but like each girl I think brings a certain flavor, brings a certain charm. My boyfriend and I love Hyunjin because I too love bread. Chu and all of her queer baiting glory. Something about Olivia has face I'm just like really obsessed with. I think she's so pretty. Let's get on to icons of icons, like the group to end all groups. Sonia Shide, AKA Girls Generation. They bring the heat. Again, that was the group my friend Riley really tried hard to get me into when I just wasn't feeling it. And then one day I was. My biases in Girls' Generation are hands down. Young, Hyoyeon. I love them. My favorite thing to do when I'm bored low key is watch like compilation videos of like Girls' Generation funny moments. And they're my favorites. My all time favorite Girls' Generation song has to be Catch Me If You Can, which is a point of contention in my relationship because my boyfriend regards it as trash. But I love Catch Me If You Can. It just like gave such a different like vibe for the group and the choreo for that is insane. I love like a high octane choreo song. Pop Goblin, favorite, catch me if you can. I'm consistent. But there's so many, like they have like such a repertoire of hits and they've done so many different like concepts for the comebacks. Like, oh, love. I got a boy, K-pop royalty, like jam. Genie, amazing. All Night, their like latest comeback before they kind of like low-key disbanded. I love All Night. Holiday can suck it, but All Night, a bop. The visual, amazing. Into the New World, obviously. Like when you discover a new group, you always have to go back and listen to their like debut single. And to this day, that is still a bop, hands down. That being said though, they do have a lot of songs I hate. First and foremost, Run Double Run. Oh my God, no, no, no. The Boys, I hate The Boys so much it is so cheesy with that being said the boys birth one of my all-time favorite k-pop moments that was during a time where like a lot of groups were starting to try to make waves in the u.s for the first time wonder girls were trying to do a thing back then and whatnot and there's a video of the girls performing the boys in the u.s and in the middle of it Sohyun's extension like falls out. I'll post the video on screen if i could find it her extension like falls out and they're trying to do the choreo and She's like trying to kick it off the stage and you see Jessica and Soo Young notice and they're laughing at her. It's really funny. Also, like I was never into the group when Jessica was a part of the group. So anything regarding Jessica, I just like, I don't care about necessarily. I don't, I don't care. I also hate her voice. So like most groups that big and that have been around for that long, they did have a cute little subgroup moment with TTS, which I hate, but it's my boyfriend's like all time favorite like group. He's like shaking his head behind the camera. Whisper by TTS. His all time favorite song, period, hands down. They also did the OGG subgroup after the three girls left after All Nights, after their 10 year anniversary. I actually really liked that song. I didn't mind that EP as much. And then they also had a couple girls go solo. Taeyeon, obviously that girl. Like you cannot deny that girl is vocalist of the century. I'll actually get to this a little bit later. Besides those groups, I do have a lot of other groups that I really do like and I have uh, other favorite groups as well. First and foremost, Red Velvet. Um, I actually got to see them in concert. My boyfriend and I went up to Vancouver, BC to watch them for their Red Merit tour. Happy memories. My biases in Red Velvet, Irene and Joy, hands down. Visual, cute, beautiful, bubbly talent. My favorite Red Velvet song, hands down, has to be Red Flavor, but because it is Red Velvet and there's a red and a velvet, I can't just have one favorite single. So to kind of accent Red Flavor, my other favorite Red Velvet song is Automatic, which is again, that like sultry 90 R&B girl group vibe. It's just slow and it's a vibe. It's a fun Friday night kind of vibe, you know? But again, Red Flavor, if you want to get me hyped up, there's a specific footage where again, at the concert, they did their whole track list and I knew the, the whole concert like set list and they get to the last, last encore song and they hadn't played Red Flavor at all. And I was, I was upset. I was distraught low key. And then the lights dim and the lights come back on and the song starts and you like, my boyfriend has a video where I just start screaming like the words. Very happy moments. Red Velvet, they're a group that like they've done a lot and they have like a somewhat fairly diverse concept with their, each of their comebacks. So I have a lot of other favorite K-pop songs that actually happen to be all Red Velvet. Like Russian Roulette, I think was the first Red Velvet video I ever watched. The visuals for that were top notch, insane. Ice Cream Cake was a great one from the same EP as Automatic. That was the first album that featured Yeti. Look or Boa off their Perfect Velvet album. You Better Know, which is off the same album. That was a lead single slash the B-side for their Red Flavor tour. So whenever they did their first comeback stages, that was the opening song. Fun fact, don't like Yeti at all. Don't know why she was added to the group. She brings absolutely nothing to my table. I don't think she's a good vocalist, a good dancer, a good performer. That's a hot take and I know it is, but that is the soapbox I'm gonna stand on right now. 
now. I don't like Yeti at all. Also for a while there, Red Velvet lost me with a lot of their concepts. They just weren't doing it for me. Like Zimzalabim. Oh my God, you wanna piss me off, play that song. I just think it was so dumb. Zimzalabim. Really Bad Boy I thought was kind of dumb just because Bad Boy was such a great song and I feel like they were trying to capitalize off that concept and it, they just didn't do it well. Power Up, I hate Power Up. Also Cookie Jar, I hate that. I hated it so much. My boyfriend played it in the car the other day and I was actually mad at him for it. But especially with Psycho, they're getting back onto this train of like actually like good songs now, so I can't be too mad. Then one of my other favorite groups, and it's just, it's not like I love, love, love the group, but they have some of my all time favorite K-pop songs, period. That's La Boom. I don't know how I discovered this group. I think they were just in like autoplay on YouTube one day, but they had a song called Between Us, which again, if there's anything I'm gonna say right now about myself is I have such a soft spot for like, slow, sultry, like 90s inspired R&B jams. The song Between Us by the group La Boom embodies that 106%. It is such a dope, sexy song. It is such a, it's just a great like sonic experience. Check it out if you haven't. But they also have another great song called Turn It On, which I'm also a big fan of, so. And let's talk about Blackpink. Blackpink is a group that, again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, was one of the first groups I got into getting into K-pop. Like Blackpink a lot, but here's the deal. I also hate Blackpink a lot sometimes. Let's talk about it. Biases in Blackpink for sure. Lisa. Everything about her attitude, performance, talent, she embodies it all. You know how you and your girls, I don't know if you did this back in the day, but when I was a kid in third grade, I would do like cheetah girl like routines with my friends in elementary school. If I were to do that now with my friends for Blackpink, I'd be Lisa, hands down. You couldn't tell me otherwise. My favorite Blackpink song, Playing With Fire, hands down. Whistle, close second. Close third, Forever Young. They have bops. Their first few records had bops. Whistle, doo 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 doo, I'll even like consider as if it's your last, but then they lost me for a while. They got really into that EDM crap that I'm, I just don't like EDM. But then they came back and they did their last little comeback. How you like that? Actually fire. Lisa, again, she killed that. Great song, great visuals. Actually really happy to see this direction now. And plus they're like getting ready for their album release for once and they're actually dropping music consistently. And so this is apparently like not even the real, real single from that album. So I'm excited to see what else they drop, especially because I think they talked about going in a different direction for this record, which, oh God, I hope so. YG was doing them dirty for a while just because people wanted music and Blackpink wasn't doing it. Meanwhile, you had Twice coming out with a new song every five minutes. But speaking of which, let's get into Twice. Love and hate Twice all at the same time. Biases, Mina and Jihyo. Jihyo is the Latina queen we all deserve. Mina is a visual talent, a dancer. Beautiful. My favorite Twice song, I don't have one. Likey's up there, but so are Signal and TT. Fun fact, I'll post it on screen. I went to Vancouver for the Red Velvet concert. We found the alley that Twice filmed Likey in. And of course I took pictures on it. I like Twice a lot for the most part. They're just a group that does a lot. And the thing I don't like about Twice is just that they don't come out with fresh concepts for me. All of my favorite groups, like I mentioned, CLC, G Friend, even Blackpink, I'm gonna give it to Blackpink, Girls' Generation. They change up their concept a little bit. It's a different kind of vibe, a different kind of look. And Twice has just kept the same energy for the last like three years consistently. And it was cute when they were first coming out, when you had Cheer Up, you had, like, ooh, ah, you had TT, and then it just, it didn't change. And so you had a while there between Likey and Feel Special where it was just nothing. And then it came out with Feel Special and I was like, okay. And then Fancy came out and then their last song, More and More, actually wasn't bad. So I'm like, okay, twice. Like, you're giving it to me again. One of my least favorite K-pop personalities ever, Nyan, or as we like to call her in this household, Nyan Cinemide. She's just so annoying. She gives me Camila Cabello vibes and I also hate that bit. And it's just, no, it's no for me, sorry. But now that they're kind of changing the direction again and going back into something that's a little bit more different, I just want to see something like different. I want to see like a very drastically different concept from them. And then I'll be like, okay, they have more credibility again. Also, I need them to sing live. They did their whole 16 competition, which if you didn't know, Twice was foreign from a JYP run show called 16 in itself had some controversy as well. We know the girls can perform. We know for the most part they can sing, but they don't sing for their live stages, which pisses me off. Cause you have groups like Blackpink where they're not powerhouse vocalists, but they perform really well live and you hear them perform live. CLC, G Friend, great performers live. Their mics are live. You can hear it. Twice? No. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the makeup look. Before we end the video, I'm just gonna keep talking about some K-pop groups that I really like and have opinions on. So I'm going off a of Google Docs for this. I had a lot of things to say. You have Itzy, Dala Dala was fire. Since then, nothing. IOI, and I'm pissed about IOI because first of all, IOI gave us some really talented girls. I will be forever thankful for them giving us Chunga. Chunga is 
a deity in this household. IOI had their thing, it ended, then 101 came around and 101 was so hyped up and so big. I think they actually like were pushing to extend their contract to give him a lot longer longevity to drop more singles. And I really wish they'd kept that energy for IOI. I'd love to see more from them just because they're really, really talented. They gave us Chunga, they gave us Somi. They gave us a lot of really talented girls that I think were slept on in their companies. And then those girls got their time to shine finally. So thankful for that. A-Pink hated for a long time. And it was a group that I knew had a lot of hype, especially with K-pop fans. And I think they had this line between being second gen and third gen. And it wasn't until uh -uh, that I was like, oh, like who's this group? <laughs> and their last couple singles or the last single, Dum Da Dum, was actually like really good too. So I'm gonna keep an eye on A-Pink, but they weren't hitting for me until very recently. Let's talk about some second gen girl groups. Sistar, no. But I'm thankful for Hyolin. Excited to see more solo work from her. She did really good those first couple singles. Hated everything afterwards. To Anyone it was a group I never got into. I know that's like everyone's K-pop. Every time I told anyone I was into K-pop, they were like, oh, sing out to anyone. No, but I am thankful for Park Bomb. She's a character. Wonder Girls. <laughs> I know they're a huge second generation group. I am familiar with a lot of their bigger singles, like Nobody, Be My Baby and all that stuff. It's just not a group I got into until they did their first lineup reboots with uh, Sent Me Again, like Why So Lonely in that era, which was actually really, really good. I like those songs a lot. Wonder Girls actually, if I think about it, was my first exposure ever to K-pop. This is again during that time in like 2012, 2013, when K-pop groups were trying to make an uh, initial US impression and they had an akon fueled single called like money and that was my that was the first time i ever saw a k-pop group on tv in the u.s and i was like oh who is this and so i like kind of looked into them but it didn't do enough for me and i was like yeah never mind but thankful for them giving me send me send me also someone i've seen in concert before amazing performer miss a um i don't like miss a their song breathe is kind of catchy i'll give them that but fun fact Bad Girl, Good Girl is my all time least favorite K-pop song. If you want to piss me off, piss me off, play that song. Just something about it, it drags on. It's painful to listen to. It's so dumb. I hate that song with a burning passion. And then FX. I hope they know that they created a pop masterpiece with their Four Walls EP. That's all I got to say. And then going through some solo girls, girls would have been in the groups that I just mentioned that we really like. Chunga, again, I think one of my all time favorite K-pop performers acts, period. Gotta go, just does that for me. Stay Tonight, another visual masterpiece. She's so talented. I can't wait to see what that girl can do. I hope she does US work very soon. Or if she were to drop more English songs, I think she would be an unstoppable force, dare I say. Send me. Visual genius. All of her songs, like the first song I saw of her was Gashinan. I didn't realize who she was, but I was like, damn, like this girl, like this company put money and work into this girl. This visual is everything. This song is a bop. The live stages were everything, especially the one where she switched the male and female dancers. So it was like high key, very gay. And just her singles after singles after singles were bops. Her last song, Pora Pam amazing. So I'm excited to see what she does. She's just someone who brings such visual flair and such artistic influence into how she releases songs that I'm excited to see more from her every time. Hyolin, we joke that she is Tanache's tether in this household. She really did that with Dali and Cece and then she just dropped off. Her last single, hate it. But a great performer, very, very talented girl. Excited to see what else she comes back with and hopefully it goes back to like her first kind of songs. Uh, let's talk about some of the girl generation solos. Yudi actually really liked her solo album, Into You, Bop, Illusion, another bop. So that was a surprise because I didn't like her in Girls' Generation. I thought she was really, really annoying. It didn't bring a lot to the table, but that solo record, actually really good. So I'm excited to see if she drops more. DJ Hyo. I don't like her solo work, Mystery or whatever, and Wannabe. They're horrible. DJ Hyo, different story, different vibe, different kind of girl. I actually really liked it. Sober is a really good song. So I'm excited to see if she comes out with more stuff along those lines. Taeyeon, I talked about this earlier. Taeyeon, undeniably, one of the best vocalists to come out of K-pop in a long time. My favorite Taeyeon song is called Something New and it's very like 70 discos vibe, but I also really like I Got Love. I just like how all of her solo stuff is just very, very diverse. Like it's not very just straight one single. She really plays around with sound, hugely talented. And then one of my other all-time favorite K-pop soloists is Hyuna. I know she was in the group for a minute. I wasn't into that group very much. I know they did a lot of like EDM focused stuff, which again, it's not my vibe, but Babe or Baby by Hyuna. One of my all-time favorite songs, period. It's a vibe. The visuals for that video were great. She did lips and hips, which I liked a lot too. She just has like that bad girl attitude I really like out of a female performer. She gives me a lot of like Rihanna vibes, which you know, Fancy Friday, I love Rihanna. Then left her agency after the whole Edon incident. And then she got signed to Size Agency and she just released Flower Shower, which I don't hate. It's not my favorite. I'm excited to see again what she can do when she's giving a lot more creative ability and freedom to do what she wants to do. So excited to see more from her. Also, if you made it this far in the video, I'm gonna ask one thing, go look up the song Kitty Kitty by Grayish. It's a really funny joke in this house just because we watched the video kind of as a joke and then we got really into the song. But my boyfriend was like, did you know there's a K-pop group that vogues? And I was like, 
what? And so he played this song for me. And it's this girl group from this very small agency called Grayish. They released this one song called Kitty Kitty, which low key is a bop. I play it at least once or twice a week in my house. But if you want a good time, Grayish, Kitty Kitty, look it up. And yeah, that's my opinion on K pop girl groups, some of my favorite groups, my biases, favorite songs, K pop soloists. Do you listen to K-pop? Let me know. Comment down below who some of your favorite performers are, what you thought about what I had to say about some of these groups, because I know some of these groups have fans that riot hard for them and I may not like the groups that much. Sound off in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching this Fenty Friday. Tune back next week for next week's Fenty Friday. So hit that notification bell, thumbs up, and yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye.